Good morning. I'm Nate Moore with Melco. I'm a member of the Melco Applications team, and I've got a good chunk of the team with me here today. I've got Scott Stingle and Mike Doe, who's right there. And uh, they will be answering questions that um, you comment in, or they'll be passing them along to me um, if it's something that uh, I can squeeze into what I'm doing on screen. Um, so today we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of different features with our software. We'll be looking at a feature in Design Shop that allows you to set up a bunch of names. So think team names. I have a basketball team and I want to have all of those names generated for me. Um, and most importantly, I want them spelled right and I really don't want to be responsible for the spelling. So it's going to allow me to copy those names out of an email, paste them into um, a window in Design Shop and generate all of those um, automatically, which is really nice. Um, the other side of that feature um, is a portion of the OS that allows me to load um, the files and have them sew out one after the other. Um, and there's a couple of different ways to kind of accomplish that, so we'll talk about that as well. So let's go into Design Shop and um, let's start setting up a team name like that. So to start, I'm just going to, eh, let's go in and grab, I said basketball, didn't I? Let's do basketball. So I'm going to close this. So I have a basketball right here. Typically, I would set this up, um, and I'm going to want this kind of set up over close to the center. I'll center this design before I'm done. Um, and then we'll set up Let's do tigers. That would be plural. There we go. And then um, let's do athletic block. And I think these tigers need to be purple because apparently I think everything needs to be purple. We'll shorten that up. Um, so the thing that you want to do when you're when you're setting this up is you'll want to make sure that you get all your settings right um, the first time. So typically, I would set up a sample file, sew it out, make sure that I have my underlay, my tie stitches, my all of that ready to go. And then I would go in and modify it so that it can be set up for team names. So Nate, a question on the underlay and uh, you know the properties of the stitch, what would I consider in setting those up? What would, what's important to look at to get those right? Did you ask that or did somebody on there ask that? I asked that. <laughs> um, so a lot of times uh, things that I'll look at in the question, I think you guys heard it, but what all do I consider when, when setting up underlay? Um, there are very, very few things I do that don't have some sort of underlay under them. Um, and it works as kind of a foundation stitching. And a lot of what I consider is um, either the, the texture of the garment and or the size of my element. And so as that, that plays in, um, typically uh, what I will use, if, I, if all of my stuff is the same size and it's all going on the same thing, I'll consider just setting up um, an underlay. Like uh, in this case, for this size, I do something like an edge walk that's gonna clean up my edges. Um, if this was going on a basketball jersey that has some of those uh, holes in the knit, um, I, I definitely would consider that to give it kind of a bridge to, to go across um, in case one of those stitches hits that hole or that lack of fabric. Um, you'll also definitely want to have a, a stable backing for something like that. But if, I, if I'm not entirely sure or I have things that change um, width, because typically small things require a lot less underlay than, than wider things, um, I'll really consider using uh, auto underlay, which will, um, based on a table, figure out what the best thing is for the size. And if you have questions on any of those, anytime you see uh, this button with the little uh, ellipsis in it, the three little dots, um, beside like a check mark, that's typically the properties of what go into that check mark. All right, so I've got this set up except I forgot to put on tie stitches. And I'm apparently working with some old defaults here. Sorry about that, guys. And then 
I'm just going to duplicate this, drag this down, and I'm going to get rid of a lot of my line type for a second, and then I have my height set to millimeters. If that's making you guys crazy, you can change that. Go to Tools and Options and Measurement Units, and I am changing my letter height to inches because that's something I'm a little more used to with letter height. And let's bring this down just a touch. All right, so this is the portion that I'm going to set up to swap out as name. So typically when I do that, I choose something that has kind of the medium number of letters. I don't, I'm making up phrases as I go, but um, that if you start swapping in and out names, it's going to look like it kind of hit the average number of letters. And I'll, I'll set that up this way. Um, or if I have something like this that's straight across, what I may consider doing is adding letters until I kind of hit that edge to where it looks even. That's one too many, so I'm going to take one of these out. And that looks pretty even on the sides, so I like that. And the trick that we're going to do to make sure that everything fits is we're going to use envelope as the line type. So I'm going to change this back to envelope. I don't typically edit all of my letters um, when I'm in envelope because that can do some kind of funny things that you're not expecting um, if you are just trying to change the spelling. Now, we're going to use all those funny things to make all of the names fit. So it can be very useful. So I'm going to hit apply and OK. And I'm using envelope right now. And I'm not distorting it the way that I did tigers. I'm just going to have it straight across the bottom. But I'm using envelope to contain um, the names that I'm going to use. And so I'm going to hop into uh, the manual. So here's half of envelope um, and what it does. And then if I go down below, and look at uh, scale to fit. Um, scale to fit is an option. When it's enabled, it will both squish to fit and stretch to fill. So if the name, I started out with Justin, and then I moved down to Christopher, and it squished to fit. And then below that, I changed it back out to Sue. Well, it stretched to fill, but it always kept that same shape. Um, Typically, what I want for this application and the way that I'm using it now is I'm going to disable it. When I disable it, if it's longer than the space, it will still squish to fit, but it's not going to stretch to fill, so it's not going to stretch out those shorter names. So if I go into those properties, I'm going to disable scale to fit, hit apply, and OK. And now, um, how am I getting these names and, and why is this so important to me? Well, if I look at an email, so I just typed up this bogus email, but this customer needs all these shirts in all these sizes with all of these names. And I can copy these out of here per size. If you have a name that's just a list with carriage returns, you can do it that way as well. And here's one very excellent reason of why I might use this. How are these names spelled? There's so many different ways to spell the same name. John Smith, John Smith. Sean Moore, Sean Moore, Sean Moore. And Jeff Knight and Jeff Knight. And they're all pronounced the same, so good luck. Um, make sure you get that in writing, and if you get it typed out, in an email fashion, then you can copy it out of there. If it's a handwritten note, then you are trying to figure out what their handwriting really is, and you're having to count on your ability to type, which mine's a little questionable sometimes. So let's go back in here. Um, so what I like about this option and the way that this is formatted is um, I can copy a ton of names and put them into group names. So let's actually look at that. So I'm going to go into the properties of this, and I'm going to enable group names. So it's on the bottom of this list. I'm going to enable group names. And here I can begin just typing Mike 
crypto. Add and Nate. Oops. Didn't uh, I didn't get my last name on there? That's okay. Um, all right. So if I have these, I can select these names so I can have my entire team here. And then if I wanted to select a certain size, just like selecting elements in the project view, I can click on one, hold control, click on another. I can do non-consecutive names, or if I hold shift, I get consecutive names. And I can move them over into the selected names list. So what is the selected names list? Selected names are, in this case, um, I have the whole team, now I want to just go grab all of the smalls, so I generate all the smalls at the same time, I can do that. When you're looking over here, you want to be careful, are you using the first name or the last name? If there's only one, it's going to use it for both. Um, another thing you need to be careful about, uh, names that have a space in what is considered or used as the first name, there you want to make sure that you use both. So just be careful with that. Um, and then you can do the whole name or the whole list. I like again grabbing just a specific size. So let's clear this and let's go back to that email. And I'm going to grab just the smalls. So here's one of those names with uh, a space in it. And what's nice about this is it's separated by a comma. I can paste that in here with the commas, hit add, and it will separate them into separate names, again, if it's separated by a comma. Um, the other thing you can do if you've got a whole list with carriage returns, you can just copy that whole list and hit paste, and it will paste it in there for you. All right, so I have all of the smalls. I'm going to move the whole list over. I want to make sure to use both because I want to make sure that I get all of Mary Beth in there. And then I have my output type. So this is where things get a little more uh, interesting as far as how to set up these files from a more historic standpoint. Um, it used to be that I ran the competitions machines and I ran a multi-head. And I can hear boos and hisses. Um, but I would have, Ooh. stop it, I would have uh, six heads. And what I might choose to do is set this up so that it ran the design and then it ran name, 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 all in the same spot. And what I would do is I would program it so that I'd run the design, I would run tigers and then the basketball, or the basketball and then tigers, and then the names would be last. So I would put in a hold command right before it did the names and I would run across to my machine, I would turn all the heads off but one, and I would hit go. And it would sew the first name. And then I would turn that head off, turn the next head on, and sew the next name. And keep going and hope that I don't miss a step. Um, not my favorite way to do it. Another thing to look at is design name repeat, which does the whole thing over and over and over again and stacks it one on top of the other. So if I were to do it that way, I could sew the whole thing, put in my color sequence, oranges, black, purple, hold, and then when I run it on the machine, the machine will stop, I can take that shirt off, put the next one on, hit go, and it will sew the next one, even though it's all in one file. And so that's, that's kind of handy from a file management standpoint in that it's, it's all contained in one piece. Um, what I don't love about it on our machines is I can't trace every time. And I'm paranoid, so I like to trace to see if it rises up and I've actually folded something under it and sewed it to itself, or I'm going to. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to do it as separate files. Um, you can do names only, you can do design only, you can do design, the design once. you got lots of options. Um, the ones that are the most common, I think, for me are design name repeat or um, separate files. And I tend to use separate files, again, so that I can load it to the machine and every time I'm at the beginning of a design and so I can trace it. And so that's a little less scary for me. So I'm gonna hit apply. 
and OK. And I'm going to save this. Well, first I'm going to center it, because I said I was going to. Then I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save this into my super special group name session file. And I'm going to save this as Tigers Setup. And I'm doing that as an OFM. If I save it as the OFM, it's just going to save the setup file. If I load this to the machine, it's, it's not going to give me all the different names. So to generate all of the names, I would save this as a stitch file. So I'm going to create a folder so that I don't lose track of all of these files. So I'm going to create tiger names. And now I'm going to change my extension to an EXP. So I save it as a stitch file. Hit save. And I've been noticing this. I don't know if this is something that you will encounter or not. Um, I get encountered an improper argument that pops up. Um, I've done that on two computers today. I don't know if it's because I let engineers on my computer or not. Um, I tested it on Scott's computer. His didn't. Um, I've not made Mike do his. Um, but as you see below, you it generated all of those files. Um, you see the very last name in that list. And so I'm going to go back and open that file. The, the thing I like about this is it labels it with the name. So it's very hard to confuse who and what it is. And you also get the nice preview. Now you don't get the nice colors. You get some kind of funny colors. And that's because it's an EXP and it doesn't really hold that color information. But when we go to the machine, we don't care. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to load. I like the Halloween design. I will do that shortly. Nice. I will load in a minute. Just thinking about it. That design. And conveniently, it's in really not so bad colors because it's pretty close, um, which is pretty fun. But I think we will make uh, that last color purple because that's what I said, right? Yeah, OK, perfect. All right, so now we have the color sequence set up. And as long as I'm not automatically matching colors, it will stay this way. So if I load the next design, I'm doing all this manually. I can load Mary Beth, open it, and it will load the design. Sorry, not open, but load. And it's in those colors again. So I don't have to worry about it. And the nice thing is I'm loading separate files. I can trace every time. And I really, really like that. Now, if I wanted to automate this a little bit more, number one, why am I in standard? I haven't touched OS on this computer for quite a while. Um, what I can do is I can go into design queue. And I can add files to that queue. So I'm going to go add all of these files. And again, I'm using that shift or control to select multiple files. I'm going to add them to that queue. And it's taking a little bit longer. I'm guessing that's because I'm streaming to you guys at the same time. So we do have a question while that's going on. OK. Uh, Turtle uh, out of Florida, I believe. Hey, Juliet. Asked if um, this would work on the simplified interface as well. Uh, the queue. So there is no queue in the simplified I, interface. Yeah, I don't. I to. don't think so. Um, for the do the colors stay the same? Um, yeah, as long as you turn off the the what is it closest match? Yes. Setting. I forget the. I'm sorry. I forget the naming of all of that. And I can I can swap over closest there and sh sure. show that. Match, yeah. Like that. I'll swap over here in a minute and and take a look. Um, but yeah, the, the colors being the same and loading multiple designs and tracing every time, uh, totally. Um, here, uh, we have all of those names. Here we have the number of runs. So if Jess was getting two shirts, I could up the number of runs so that it will do that twice before it loads the next design. And if I want it to automatically load the next design, 
I can go into my settings and I can say auto load next pending design. So when I'm done with the two runs from Jess, then it will load Mary Beth. That's pretty great. Um, now, what I don't love about it as is, is Jess will go to the bottom of the list and by the time I'm done with Elliot, it will load Jess again and I really need to pay attention to that. If I want to remove it from the queue when I'm done so that I don't accidentally do something twice, uh, I can go in and say, please remove the designs from the queue on design load. Great. Um, the other thing that I like in this is prompt before auto load. So what this checkbox does is when it's done with the job, it says, hey, you're done with the interspecified number of runs, two jobs. Um, are, are you really done? Um, so yes, hit yes, and it loads the next design, or no, I sewed it to itself, I have to go fix it because I forgot to trace. Um, give me one more run. And so you have that option and it's just a little less scary. If you're super confident with how you're doing it, go ahead and turn that off and you're good to go. Um, me, I'm a little more cautious sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna hit apply and okay. And so now I'm going to uh, pretend that I'm done with this run, which is one that I loaded and you can see zero of one. This is like a, a previous job rather than being in the pending. Um, so I'm going to hit return to origin, which is going to make everything think that I just completed this job. And the machine just moved. All right, so now let's load the selected design. There we go. Let's do that again. Aha. So, this is something new. Um, it used to be when I would return to origin, it would uh, make the machine act like it had completed the run. Um, so you see me trying this to fake out the machine and it's not letting me fake it out. It knows better. Um, so my old trick, doesn't work. I'd actually have to sew this out. Um, Did you go into tools and settings and change the queue? Did I do what now? Um, so go to the settings tab. Yeah. And go up to the design queue and remove. Yeah. yeah. You've got everything. On I did it. Up. So yeah, it's it's something that we've changed um, yeah. from the last time I taught how to do this. One more thing while we're in there. So yeah. Can you go back in there? Sorry. No problem. If you have multiple uh, machines, if you have more than one Melco machine, can you explain that? Yeah, so uh, we do have a master queue. So if I had uh, three machines plugged in and I um, wanted to just blast through this job, I could select enable master queue and then all three machines would pull from the same list. Um, as it is, the queues are machine specific, so if you were really daring, you could do smalls on one, mediums on another, and larges on another. I would not do that. I'm not that coordinated. Um, but you can enable master list and do all of them pulling from the same list at the same time. Um, so that's pretty handy. I don't have that set up in here. I'm running out of room in my office as it is with everybody in here right now. Sorry guys. Um, but yeah, no, you could totally do that. And if you want to have them machine specific, just uncheck that. Cool. Thanks, Nate. And then uh, the other thing, uh, just to let you guys know what I've got going on so that you can see the colors as I have it defined, um, I turned off use colors from design, which is why you're not seeing everything in all of those weird EXP colors. Um, if you're seeing that, that's why it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can show it that way or not. It will still sew out in the colors that you specify. Um, one more question, Nate. Unless um, you have auto match on. On the queuing system, yeah. is that a uh, Bravo and an EMT? Uh, or is it only EMT 16, XTS, XT? You're asking this because you know the answer and I always have to look this up. Yeah, so this is not a Bravo <laughs> feature. Queuing is not a feature in Bravo. Um, you can definitely load each design manually, but the queuing system is only for 
uh, the EMT-16s, XTSs, XTs, or red and whites. Yeah. Okay. I would have had to go try it because I don't remember. All right. Um, so this is definitely one way to handle this. Um, and you, you don't... Um, you don't even have to have a design. You can just set up names to do it. So if you were doing logo on one side and, and names on, on the other, you can set up just the name file and that works really well too. Um, other, other kind of options to consider, um, because it's been in my head, um, trick or treat bags, why not? So I go in, I change my lettering to envelope, and you don't have to change it to envelope, but if you don't, um, the widths of everything are going to be changing all over the place. Envelope just allows me to contain it a little bit better. Um, all right, so now I'm going to give him a little bit of a smile. This is going to look weird for a minute. Hang tight. Oh, wow. I said it was going to look weird for a minute. Hang okay. tight. There it looks better. Whew. Critics. There we go. So now I have my name here. Um, it's looking a little weird. Let's get some trims in there. And uh, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go back into group names and let's go copy some of those names. Um, another thing I really like about this, um, I have a friend whose name is not Jack, um, whose last name has an apostrophe in it. Um, I've had coworkers, last name of O'Brien, um, same thing, apostrophe. And for some reason that was hard for a lot of people that they went to for embroidery, and I'm not sure why. Um, it is something that we can totally handle, so don't stress about that. Um, so let's grab these guys real quick. And I'm going to enable this. I just copied them from that list of carriage returns. I'm just going to hit paste. They go in there, and I'm going to add them all into this list. You can do, again, last name, first name, or both. Again, I'm going to do you know what, let's do design name repeat once so that you guys can see what that looks like. And uh, file, save as, and you can save it as the setup file, um, which I should probably do before I get going too far. And then uh, save as, and again, to save it with all the separate files or all the generated names, even if it's one file, you save it as a stitch file. Runs through everything. Um, didn't get the improper argument that time, that's fun. Um, and now let's take a look at this because this is going to be absolutely crazy. Um, so if I look. Wow. Yeah, I, it was it's a lot. Okay. It's a lot of stitches, they're all stacked onto each other. If I send this to the machine, it's going to look just like this, but I would put in, I've gotta find the right number of things. So is it three colors or is it four? Now I've lost track. Three colors, that's making more sense to me now. Um, so you would do color, color, hold, or three colors and then hold. It will repeat that color sequence over and over again. So you load one design and it will run the little bit, hold. You can swap that out, run the next one. Again, my problem with that is I can't trace every time. So I'm going to save this as separate names. Uh, you know what? Just saving as a EXP is not going to do it. I need to go into the properties of my lettering, go into group names, and this is what's dictating how that file is formed or how those files are formed. I'm going to change that to separate files, hit apply and OK. Um, another super kind of 
interesting thing, if you need to edit individual names, you can go into those group names, select a name, hit apply, and it will show up here so you can add, you know, you can scoot letters around or do whatever you need. Um, file, save as, we'll do it as exp. Apparently, I only get that argument when I do separate files. That's okay. It's still generating those files. So there they all are. Ha! <laughs> Jeff looks kind of surprised. His little mouth is little. That's fun. Um, so again, uh, holiday doesn't matter. Stocking tops, same kind of thing. So Start out with something, let's do something a little festive. Um, something like this. And then go into group names, enable it, paste it, bring those over. Let's just do the first names. Let's do separate files. Um, so this one I did not put envelope on, so you can see the difference. I also didn't have a design with it. But if I go into that folder, there they all are. All their different spellings. All done Man, well. That saves a lot of time, huh? It does. More importantly, it saves me from typing things incorrectly. Um, so. And did it name the files? Are they named the? They're named whatever. They're named. So they're named the position in the list. Okay. So zero one. John. Zero 02, John with an H. Wow. Yeah, so you can go back through your list, find whatever uh, name you're looking for, and, and pull it up pretty easily, I think. That's very handy. Yeah. Um, good tools, good features, um, and, and super easy to use. Um, just do yourself a favor, remember to set up one and test it before you generate all of them and just start sewing. Because if you forget tie stitches in one, you're gonna not have them in all of them. Um, same thing with pull offset, underlay, all of those normal things. So set one up, test sew it, please test sew it, and then go back in, add your names, generate them, um, and you should be good to go. Any other questions coming in? No other questions at this time. Nice. Um, if you think of some, we will try to keep popping into those comments um, throughout the day. So go ahead and chat them in. Um, if not, great. Please go give this a shot and try it. Um, it's a it's a handy handy feature. Both both sides of it. So um, until next time, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>